All right, everybody, we're going to finish up the book of Exodus. And I did mean to finish Exodus in the last video when I read chapter uh, 38 and 39, but we're going to read chapter 40 separate. So I just wanted to uh, pray again, even though this is uh, a continuation from previous chapters, it's always a good time to pray. We previously discussed how the burning of incense is a, sim a symbolism for prayer. And incense was always burning in the tabernacle. It was supposed to stay burning. And when you pray to God, we are to pray without ceasing. God wants us to pray. God wants us to have a relationship with Him. So anytime you read the Bible, whether you are facing prosperity or lack, whether you are in a beautiful time of your life or in a difficult time of your life, it is always a good time to be drawing close to God. So I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together in your word to finish the book of Exodus. Please help me to do this word justice in reading it for your glory. Uh, please help us to hunger and thirst for your word, to hunger and thirst for a relationship with you, to really come to know you in a mighty way, to be so full of the Holy Spirit, to be a blessing to others, to love like you love, and to really love on others in the way that brings you glory, to do everything for your glory, God. I really desire to know you better, and I pray for the people that are watching this with me. I pray for their lives. Um, please be with them in their hurts and their struggles. Be with them in their victories and their relationships. Life on this earth is so difficult, and we are not meant to be alone. In Genesis, it says that so many things were good in your creation, and the first time you said, God, that it wasn't good, is when you said it's not good for man to be alone. So we are not alone because you are with us, but we are also together in fellowship, in love, to, to rejoice in the Holy Spirit, to rejoice in you and how great you are to us and that you are in control of all things, that in this world we will have trials and tribulations, but we can take heart because you have overcome the world and we know that the battle is won. Thank you so much, God, for your love, for your mercy, your grace, and your goodness. And we are going to enjoy the rest of the Exodus for your glory, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Chapter 40 of Exodus. So grab your Bible or just listen along, whatever works for you. The tabernacle completed. Then the Lord said to Moses, set up the tabernacle on the first day of the new year. Place the Ark of the Covenant inside and install the inner curtain to enclose the Ark with the most holy place. Then bring in the table and arrange the utensils on it and bring in the lampstand and set up the lamps. Place the gold incense altar in front of the Ark of the Covenant. Then hang the curtain at the entrance of the tabernacle. Place the altar of burnt offering in the front of the tabernacle entrance. Set the wash basin between the tabernacle and the altar and fill it with water. Then set up the courtyard around the outside of the tent and hang the curtain for the courtyard entrance. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all its furnishings to consecrate them and make them holy. Anoint the altar of burnt offerings and its utensils to consecrate them. Then the altar will become absolutely holy. Next, anoint the wash basin and its stand to consecrate them. Present Aaron and his sons at the entrance of the tabernacle and wash them with water. Dress Aaron with the sacred garments and anoint him, consecrating him to serve me as a priest. Then present his sons and dress them in their tunics. Anoint them as you did their fathers, so they may serve me as priests. With their anointing, Aaron's descendants are set apart for the priesthood forever. From generation to generation, Moses proceeded to do everything just as the Lord had commanded him. So the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month and of the second year. For the first, for the first month of the second year, Moses erected the tabernacle by setting down its bases, inserting the frames, attaching the crossbars, and setting up the posts. Then he spread the coverings over the tabernacle framework and put on the protective layers, just as the Lord had commanded him. He took the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant and placed them inside the ark. Then he attached the carrying poles to the ark and he set the ark's cover, the place of atonement, on top of it. Then he brought the ark of the covenant into the tabernacle and hung the inner curtain to shield it from view, just as the Lord had commanded him. Next, Moses placed the table in the tabernacle along the north side of the holy place, just outside the inner curtain. 
And he arranged the bread of the presence on the table before the Lord, just as the Lord commanded him. He set the lampstand in the tabernacle across from the table of the south side of the holy place. Then he lit the, lampstand, the lamps in the Lord's presence, just as the Lord had commanded him. He also placed the gold incense altar in the tabernacle in the holy place in front of the inner curtain. On it, he burned the fragrant incense just as the Lord had commanded him. He hung the inner curtain at the entrance of the tabernacle, and he placed the altar of burnt offering near the tabernacle entrance. On it, he offered a burnt offering and a grain offering just as the Lord had commanded him. Next, Moses placed the wash basin between the tabernacle and the altar. He filled it with water so the priests could wash themselves. Moses and Aaron and Aaron's sons used water from, water from it to wash their hands and feet. Whenever they approached the altar and entered the tabernacle, they washed themselves. We're to wash ourselves from sin. We're to wash ourselves from transgression, from dishonesty, from deceit, from covetousness. We are still to wash ourselves from sin and unrighteousness because God is so holy and he has us set apart. Just as the Lord had commanded Moses, then he hung the curtains forming the courtyard around the tabernacle and the altar. And he set up the curtain at the entrance of the courtyard. So at last Moses finished the work. The Lord's glory fills the tabernacle. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. That's so lovely. Moses could no longer enter the tabernacle because the cloud had settled down over it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Oh. Now, whenever the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out on their journey following it. But if the cloud did not rise, they remained where they were until it lifted. The cloud of the Lord hovered over the tabernacle during the day and at night fire glowed inside the cloud so the whole family of Israel could see it. This continued throughout all their journeys. How wonderful. Amen to that. And the Holy Spirit dwells within, within us as a guide. But if we want the Holy Spirit to live within us, we've got to turn from sin. Um, me and a very, very good friend of mine used to term the word love obedience because we're obedient to God, not because we think that he hates us and that we're going to be in a ton of trouble if we're not perfect, but because we love God, we want to be obedient to him. We want to draw near to him. We want, we want to make our body a temple for the Holy Spirit, to turn from sin, to lay down our lives for his will for our life. And I think that the book of Exodus is beautiful. I hope you enjoyed it too. And we will be reading Leviticus next. I think Leviticus is good. And I'm probably going to be reading the Psalms intermittently as I read Leviticus. Uh, but I sure do hope you join me. Leviticus is a good book and we're going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy it. I hope you join me.